The 2018 Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. Brought to you from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is the race for the 6th Congressional District. Welcome, I'm Giancarlo Cifuentes, Regional News Director at Univision Atlanta. You are watching the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series in the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting. This is the debate among candidates for Georgia's Congressional District 6. District 6 covers portions of Atlanta's northern suburbs, including Roswell, Johns Creek, Alfareta, Sandy Springs, Doraville, and Dunwoody. Let's meet the candidates. They are in alphabetical order. Karen Handel, a Republican, was elected to represent the 6th Congressional District in a special election in 2017. And Lucy McBath, a Democrat, is the national spokesperson and outreach leader for every town for gun safety and for moms, the man action for gun sense in America. Now let's meet our panelists. Doug Richards is a reporter with 11 Alive TV in Atlanta, and Jacqueline Schultz is a multimedia journalist with Fox 5 TV in Atlanta. Now let's start it. The rules of today's debate are in our page, Atlanta Press Club website, atlantapressclub.org. To start the debate, each candidate will have and will be asked one question. Doug Richards, you get to ask the first question. Thank you. Congresswoman Handel, uh, I want to ask about the trade war. How's it working out so far in the 6th District uh, uh, for your constituents so far? So thank you very much for this opportunity to be here, and thank you, Lucy, for being here as well. It's nice to meet you. Um, look, I think everyone would agree that, especially when it uh, comes to China, that it is um, a significant issue, particularly for uh, the 6th District with such a big business footprint. What I will say and what I hear from, from constituents is this. The playing field, again, particularly with China, is not a level one for American companies. And if ever there was a time to get significant progress and moving forward with our trade agreements, this is it. And the president has had good success. We've gotten an agreement with Mexico, an agreement with China, or an agreement with Canada, and now we're seeing Japan, EU, and Britain come to the table as well. So it's time to keep pressing forward. There may be short-term pain, but we're going to keep pressing forward and get the best deal possible for American companies, which is good for American workers, which means we can sell more um, uh, products for our, our companies across the country and around the world. Jacqueline, you have to ask the question to Lucy McBath. Okay, uh, Mrs. McBath, you've said on Twitter, quote, I'm the NRA's worst nightmare, yet insist you will not infringe on Second Amendment rights in any legislation. Please explain those statements, which some may even look at as conflicting. Absolutely. I will tell you, I'm a uh, young woman who comes from a family of gun owners. My father was a hunter. My oldest nephew actually was a sniper in the Marines. Uh, so I'm not against guns and absolutely not against anyone's ability to uh, own guns, protect their families. I am a supporter of the Second <clears throat> Amendment, but I do believe firmly that with people's ability to own guns, there should be some common sense solutions uh, to making sure that people who should not have access to guns, such as people that are mentally disturbed or people that that have severe uh, criminal histories or people that are domestic abusers should not have access to guns. I simply want to make sure that we're finding common sense solutions to protecting people from unnecessary gun violence. But I am a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment. Very well. That concludes the first portion of the debate. The candidates now will ask a question to their opponent. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and 30 seconds for a rebuttal. We'll start with uh, Karen Handel. You may ask the first question. Thank you very much. Lucy, you and your husband held concurrent homestead exemptions for several years in violation of state law. You said several times that your husband is a permanent resident of Tennessee, yet your family continues to claim a homestead exemption in Cobb County, also in violation of Georgia law. Now we've learned that Cobb County has revoked that homestead exemption. At the same time, you reported that your vehicles are registered in Tennessee, also a violation of state law. My question to you is this, when do you plan to pay back the tax taxpayers for this, these fraudulent exemptions, the car taxes you've been skipping out on if, in fact, you do live in East Cobb 6th District. 
Representative Handel, I believe that you are trying to diminish the confidence that the people in this district, 6th Congressional District, have of me. But I'm more than happy to answer the question. Um, I came to Georgia in 1990. Actually, Representative Handel, I've lived in Georgia longer than you have. Uh, my son Jordan was born and raised in Georgia. He's gone to Marietta High. Now, I voted for myself in the primary election. I voted for myself in the runoff election. I didn't intend to vote for myself when I win November 6. But there again, what I will say to you is that I have paid Georgia taxes for every year that I've lived in Georgia. In 2016, when I was traveling on behalf of the Democratic Party, my husband and I had some very serious and deep family discussions and provisions, provisions that we needed to make. We decided, I decided that I was changing my res residency to Tennessee. I changed it for 2016 and 2017, I changed it back. For you to try to continue to consider me disingenu disingenuous is absolutely incorrect. Lucy, the fact is that you, your family received a homestead exemption for both of the years that you were in Tennessee. So how can you claim a homestead exemption in East Cobb if you are a resident of Tennessee? It is wrong to mislead the voters. There's nothing illegal about running for Congress in a, in a state, in a district that you don't live. But it is illegal to take a homestead exemption when you don't deserve it. If you really do live here and that homestead was valid, then that means you're violating state law by not registering those vehicles here and avoiding paying Georgia's 7% ta car tax. Lucy McMath, it's your time to make a question. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Representative Handel, it's apparent to me that, you know, you're using the same playbook that you used before, and people in this district are simply tired of it. Tired of it. Now, I get it. It must be difficult for you. Uh, you know, you have run for uh, five different seats five different times, and this is your first uh, 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 your first bid for re-election. But what I have understood about you and what I do know is that you will do or say anything uh, in your continued pursuit of your own personal power, and I'm not going to go play by these rules. I'm not going to play this by this playbook. It's time to rebuttal. Mm -hmm. You know, again, we learned last year in the campaign with John Ossoff that there's nothing illegal about running for office when you don't live in the district. But again, Lucy, it is wrong to mislead the voters about that and about it is illegal to take that fraudulent homestead <laughs> exemption. You just right here today said you lived in Tennessee in 2016 and 2017. You've said repeatedly your husband is a permanent resident of Tennessee. You cannot be a permanent resident of another state and legally take a homestead exemption in a different state. Further, if indeed you live here, you must by law register your vehicles here. This is about honesty and uh, transparency, and it is about paying your fair share of taxes just like the rest of the voters in the 6th District and the state of Georgia. Well, Can I have a rebuttal? Do you have your second rebuttal? Okay. Representative Handel, when my son Jordan was murdered in Jacksonville, Florida, I brought him home here to Marietta. He is buried 15 minutes from my house. So for you to continue to accuse me of being disingenuous and not paying taxes and not living here in this district, well, I guess I would assume that I would expect that something like that from a career politician like you. Well, we will. that concludes our second round. For those just joining us, this is the debate between candidates for <laughs> the Georgia's sixth congressional district. We will now go back to the panel to ask questions to the candidates of his or her choice until we run out of time. As a point of moderator privilege, I may also ask a question and I will determine when a, a rebuttal is appropriate. Doug, you get to ask the first question. Uh, Ms. McBath, I, I want to follow up on the issue that uh, Congresswoman Handel raised just now. Could you clarify what happened with regard to you taking uh, a, allegedly homestead exemptions in two different counties in Georgia at the same time? Some time ago, we had a family tragedy and in trying to make sure that I was helping my husband make the decisions that he didn't need to make, very personal decisions that we had to make. I decided to switch my residency while I was traveling on behalf of the Democratic Party. I changed it to Tennessee for 2016 and 2017. I switched it back, made the decisions and I switched it back. I have lived in Georgia since 1990. I have diligently paid taxes in Georgia for every year that I have lived here. Mm -hmm. if, if I may. 
recently, Cobb County revoked that homestead exemption for the McBath family because it was an improper homestead exemption. And she has just said again twice that she did indeed live in Tennessee for two years while taking a homestead exemption in East Cobb. That is not proper nor legal. You got 30 seconds to May I say I have no one. idea what Representative Handel is talking about. I made the family decisions that I needed to make with my husband in 2016, 2017. We, I switched it back for her to continue to try to dampen the confidence that people in this district have in, in me. As I said, she will do or say anything. And this is the same playbook that we saw before. Let's I'll be to delighted to show you Let's, that uh, revocation the letter questions. after the debate. Jacqueline, you get the next question. Okay. <laughs> this is for both candidates. Why do each of you believe you represent the needs and wants of women more than the other candidate. Congresswoman, would you like to start first? Thank you. I actually reject the premise of that question. It is not about representing the interests of women only in the 6th District. It's about representing the interests of the people of the 6th District. Um, I have been a public servant and worked diligently and tirelessly on the behalf of the people of the 6th. First as Fulton County Commission Chairman, where I was able to balance the budget without raising taxes. Then as Secretary of State, leading the way in elections integrity and photo ID. I have been involved in this community for nearly 25 years, where my husband and I have called the 6th District our home. Um, I know this community. I've lived in it. I've worked in it. I've been involved and engaged in this community, not traveling all around the country, uh, giving speeches for other people, but actually right here working for the people of six. I've worked diligently in Congress to get real results, real results in just my first year, delivering a tax increase that is, or a tax decrease that is going to uh, increase money in people's pockets by over $4,400 $4, a year for the average family of four. I will say that I am not a politician, and I haven't spent most of my life trying to set a career path to becoming a politician. But what I do know is my lived experiences, having been a two-time breast cancer survivor, so I understand the needs of health care for women. I do understand what it's like to lose your child to unnecessary gun violence, so I understand gun violence. I do understand, having been a single mother for years, when, I, when we had that great recession, I understood what it meant to be able to decide what I I could or could not afford. The experiences that I have had every single day that I have lived, they're the same experiences that people in this district continue to talk about me every single day. And I believe it gives me great credibility <laughs> to be able to speak truth to power to what's important to them in Washington and most specifically to women. Well, let's uh, squeeze the immigration uh, topic in, in the debate. Um, there's some talks about uh, the possibility of um, cutting federal loans or fu funds to uh, cities or jurisdictions that will support the sanctuary cities. Well, what's your take, what's your point of view uh, on this issue? If we can start with you, uh, Karen Handel. Okay, start with me again, okay. Um, first, I do not support sanctuary cities. We are a nation of laws and we should abide by them. What I do support is legal sound immigration so that those who wanna to come to our country to pursue their American dream that we are opening and welcoming to that. But we need to have fix our broken immigration system. I hope we can all agree that a caravan of thousands of people coming towards our, our border and trying to storm our border is something that we cannot um, tolerate. We do need to secure our border. That's why I worked through the Judiciary Committee on immigration reform bills, not one, but two. And unfortunately, folks on the left and on the right just did not, far right, did not want to make progress on this issue. And I'm going to continue working on it so that we can get sound, common sense immigration reform that can work for our country, be welcoming to those who want to come here, but also respect the fact that we are a nation of laws. Lucy? As a woman who's had her child torn from her, I was absolutely appalled, and I'm sure with many parents around the country, as we watched those children being torn from their families. Now, my opponent, Representative Handel, I was so appalled watching her on television gaveling down the, the, the voices of those children as they were screaming for their parents. And I will tell you that I truly believe 
that we need to have a system in place, comprehensive immigration reform, to make sure that we support a Clean Dream Act, make sure there's a pathway to citizenship for people so that we don't see these kinds of horrific policies. And yes, I do believe in law enforcement at the borders. Yes, I do believe in securing the borders, but would not not without some sense of common decency and respect for people that are coming here from war-torn nations or for from political um for political asylum. If I might, since she invoked that incident, first of all, I was one of the first Republicans to come out against the family separations at the border. Secondly, the House floor is a place for policy debate. It is not a place for political grandstanding. And with due respect, Representative Lou knew that. He knows the laws. And Lucy, what is most appalling is that I was vilified. My life was threatened. And you actually joined in on that. And I would imagine that your posture would have been extremely different had it been a Democrat woman in that speaker's chair. Time, Liz, a quick Perfect. rebuttal. I don't honestly know what Representative Handel's talking about and me joining in on that. But what I will say is this, is that people in this country that are coming here for a better way, this is what America is. This is democracy. And we need to make sure that each and every person, yes, they need to be vetted when they come here. Yes, we have to have secure borders, but we are America and we should treat each and every person with dignity and respect. That is the reason why we need comprehensive immigration reform. Moving to the next questions. Doug, your next question. I'd like to ask a question to both of you, uh, following up on the one that Jacqueline asked earlier. Um, with regard to the Me Too movement, um, and President Trump's recent analysis that suggests that the Me Too movement is threatening to men. Uh, starting with you, uh, Ms. McBeth, what's your take on, on that perspective of this issue? Is it legitimate? Well, I believe that for far too long, women's accusations about any kind of sexual harassment have not been taken seriously. And I think at any point in time, whether these investigations, we should always be making investigations on these kinds of insinuations and accusations, whether it be done by the state, whether it be done by the federal government, or whether it, whether it be done by law enforcement, we need to start taking these kinds of accusations seriously. Absolutely. On, on this, that we can absolutely agree that when there is um, a woman who has faced something, her accusations must be taken seriously. At the same time, we are a nation with a fundamental judicial tenet, which is presumed innocence. And so we have to be sure that both parties um, have their rights. They are upheld throughout the process. And unfortunately, we have seen a little bit um, uh, recently of a gross uh, rush to judgment at the same time. You know, it seems like there's a troubling double standard in this whole uh, Me Too space when there are credible allegations um, and evidence against DNC co-chairman Keith Ellison, who is a sitting member of Congress and running for attorney general in Minnesota. And yet um, there's abject silence from the left. So I think all of us, whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, have a responsibility to pursue what the allegations are in a thorough and expeditious way while also upholding holding the presumed innocence tenant. Jackie? This is for both candidates. It's about the border wall. Congresswoman, you support it. Ms. McBath, you are against building it. Uh, we can start with you, Ms. McBath. Please explain your stance and why. As I've said before, I do believe that we should have strong security and law enforcement at the borders. We should have vetting. But I do believe that we should be looking at each and every case individually. We should not be assuming that people that are coming here from more torn nations or coming here for political asylum are thieves and criminals and lumping them all together. Look at each and every situation distinctly. We need to make sure, of course, that we are vetting people that are coming here, but there is a more humane way to do so. Compe comprehensive immigration reform, making sure that Republicans as well as Democrats reach across the aisle to come to some common sense solutions so that people can live here, come here, live the American dream. 
as I said, I, I would hope that all of us can agree that a caravan with thousands of people working its way to our border in an effort to storm into our country is something that we cannot have. It underscores exactly why we must have border security. I support the wall. I support whatever measures we must take to secure the border. It is why I specifically supported legislation, uh, two immigration overhaul bills that, one, advance funded all of the security measures. Um, but unlike my opponent's supporters and many who have come here to support her, I don't support open borders and I do not support abolishing ICE because part of the jobs of our ICE agents goes well beyond just ensuring that individuals don't come legally into the country. They're there. They have saved some 700 children last year from human trafficking, apprehended 9,000 some human traffickers, coyotes, and are stopping tens of thousands of pounds of illegal drugs from coming across that border every single month. Doug, your next question. Uh, Congresswoman Handel, with regard to gun laws. Yes. Um, does it violate the Second Amendment to support uh, universal background checks? So let me just start with this. and. Lucy, you and your family have really endured an unimaginable tragedy. And I would like to recognize and say that it takes tremendous courage to turn such a horrific thing into a mission and a passion. We just happen to disagree on the approach of how to keep our community safest. I support strengthening the universal background check system. We did that in Congress this summer, closing several loopholes and making sure that the agencies responsible for maintaining that NIC system did so. I also supported opening up the door for federal research into uh, gun violence, because I think we have to understand what's happening, particularly with our young people today. It's why I supported fully funding the 21st Century Cures Act, which is really at the root of gun violence. We must do better in the arena of mental health and build out our mental health capacity. I speak to that. Jacqueline. I speak to that. Okay, you, okay thank you. Sure, 96 Americans in this country continue to die every single day and hundreds more are injured due to the fact that Persons like Representative Handel, along with the Trump administration, continue to turn a blind eye to what 90 percent of Americans in this country agree upon, background checks for all gun sales and red flag laws to protect prevent tragedies such as Parkland from happening. Now, Representative Hanel continues to align herself 98 percent of the time with President Trump and his policies. Over 30 million dollars was paid for President Trump to become uh, to become president in the White House, and that was paid by the NRA gun lobby. And Representative Handel has also received thousands of dollars from the NRA gun lobby. That's actually how she got in this seat. <laughs> and the reason why we don't get anything done in Washington on this issue is because most of our legislators are bought and paid by the NRA gun lobby. If I might, well, Lucy, you that to, is. Seconds to rebuttal, but, thank you, but that is a <laughs> ludicrous statement, Ms. McBath. Uh, first of all. I was, I was elected to the 6th District because the majority of the people of the 6th District voted for me. If you recall that election last summer, oh, wait, you don't because you weren't here and you didn't, vote, you didn't even vote in it. You will remember, however, that in that election, some $40 million was spent. The overwhelming majority of it was outside money, not even from the state of Georgia, let alone the 6th District. Thank you so much. Thank well, you. That is all the time that we have for questions. Each candidate now will have have 60 seconds for a closing statement. Lucy McBath, you get the first closing statement. Thank you very much. I am Lucy McBath, and in 2012, my son was killed in what people have considered the National Loud Music case. I started questioning our leaders. Why were these kinds of tragedies continuing to happen? And as I continued to ask more and more questions, why were our legislators not willing to keep our families safe? There was silence. There, were, there was complicity. Um, what I began to understand is that no one was going to be willing to do anything. That's the reason why I stood up, and that's the reason why I'm taking action. What I've noticed over and over again is that Karen Handel and other Republican legislators refuse to do anything about this unnecessary gun violence. They will not take action. In the end, the only things that I am beholden to in this district are the people that I talk to every single day and my son's legacy.
I'm running because I'm a mother on a mission here in Marietta to represent everyone. Kara Kendall, is your turn? Thank you very much for this opportunity to be here. And to the people of the 6th District, thank you for what is an extraordinary honor to serve you. I have worked hard over the years to represent you as Fulton County Commission Chairman, as Secretary of State, and now in Congress, where I have been working to get real results for you and hardworking families across this district, getting our economy going again so that you have more money in your pocket, uh, paycheck to paycheck, with average family of four receiving over $4,400 more um, in their paychecks. Also, making sure that everyone has opportunity for jobs with the lowest, the lowest unemployment in decades, working to end the opioid crisis, which is taking so many lives in our district, fighting against human trafficking, making sure that we keep our communities safe, our schools safe, and working on the mental health issue. I am an unlikely member of Congress, leaving an abuse, abusive home at just 17, working my way up to be a member of Congress. It is a great privilege, and I ask for your vote to be able to keep working for you. Thank you so no, much. I'm going to work hard to earn it. Thank you. Thank you so much. That concludes our debate. We'd like to remind voters that Election Day is Tuesday, November 6th, and <clears> early voting has begun. Our thanks to the candidates and the panel of journalists present. I would also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club and the Georgia Public Broadcasting for arranging today's debate. And for more information of the full schedule of general elections debates, please visit atlantapressclub.org. This debate will be archived there and the Georgia Public Broadcasting website, gpb.org. I'm Giancarlo Cifuentes. Thank you for joining us in the Atlanta Press Club Lauder Young Debate Series. Muchas gracias.